Are you struggling with trust stones in War of the Visions? Are there just too many colors and symbols? You don't even know where to start. Are all of these taps causing you chronic hand pain? Are you one of these people that just can't seem to untangle a garden hose? Nerd Knight can help. With our patented four-step process outlined in this video, even you too can manage trust stones like a master. After watching Nerd Knight's video, I feel more confident than ever. I have more free time, my units are performing better, and even my wife's noticed the difference. Okay guys, trust stones, trust stone sets, trust stone bonuses, we're gonna cover it all. We're gonna tell you the cut and dry best way to build trust stones without having to devote your entire life to it, but don't worry, you'll still have plenty of time to dress up like a squirrel for your Saturday night furry parties. So let's jump right into it. Should you be using trust stones? Yes. If you want to be super lazy, at the very least, you should be crafting green trust stones using the sets that we're about to cover and put them on your most used trust masters. This should only take you about five minutes at most and doesn't require any farming. Okay, so trust stone sets. There's a few things you should know about sets. The bonuses that you get from sets do stack with your other gear and bonuses. You pretty much always want to equip sets of three. You get lesser bonuses from sets of two and nothing from sets of one, so always use sets of three. And lastly, the color of the stones does not matter for set bonuses. You get the same bonuses no matter what color these stones are. This is why at a minimum you should be crafting green sets and putting them on your gear. Okay, so let's start with the bonuses, the sets. Let's start with the left side. These are the defensive trust stone sets. First off, we have the critical evasion set and just forget about this. It provides 25 crit evasion, another 12 from the equipment. So 37 total crit evasion, which is pretty significant, but it's doing nothing but mitigate critical hits. And sure, this can be good against some very specific compositions, particularly teams like Lightning with Cloud and Esther that do things with extra critical damage, but you're probably better off just taking the surefire thing with something like HP or Defense or Spirit. TP set, this is the exact same thing. It gives you 20% TP, 25% acquired AP. Most good units don't have too much trouble collecting AP anymore. You could make some argument for things like guild battles, raids, or tower, but come on. At that point, you're just sounding a little desperate. The evasion set, this is technically the best to achieve the highest evasion for your evasion units, so if you're going for that uber evasion build, the extra 15 evasion here is the best. It's actually 18 when you factor in the plus 3 that gets added to your equipment. But as we're going to cover in a second, the luck set actually gets you about 8 to 10 or maybe even up to 12 evasion plus some other stuff. So in most cases, the luck set is just going to be flat out better than evasion. But if you are going for that uber evasion build, the evasion set is technically best. Defense and spirit. You can see here these give three defense or spirit for the set. They add 10 healing power. So the set bonus itself is actually pretty trash tier. Now the piece that a lot of people forget about when they're talking about defense and spirit sets is that the stones themselves add another four defense or spirit each to the piece of gear, which means that the set adds 12 defense or spirit to the gear stats for a total of 15. So these aren't quite as trashed here as people have been making them out to be. However, there's a couple of things here. One, most units now have at least like 30 or 40 defense or spirit penetration. So you're probably looking at on average about 7 to 10% damage reduction. That and defense or spirit only protects you from physical or magic attacks, not both. I do think these are actually the go-to defensive runes for units that don't have high base HP or don't need evasion or are just one trick ponies. For example, using a spirit set on more. Use these sets on gear that already have high defense or spirit and you can get the most benefit. For example, something like Rain's Coat with spirit runes will provide a whopping 29 spirit in total. But in general, the better defensive rune set you want to go with is HP. This gives you 10% HP for yourself and 300 from the stones. The 10% is pretty significant for tank units, but the real kicker is the 5% all element resist. This is just 5% damage reduction pretty much across the board, which also cannot be reduced or debuffed by enemy units. 
This is overall probably the best set for extra survivability. You can't go wrong with the 5% damage reduction or HP, though there will be some cases where the defense or spirit set will provide you more effective HP. Just keep that in mind for all of you Ready Player Will nerds out there. Now lastly, let's talk about the Luck set. This is the go-to for damage units and maybe even evasion units. This is because the 15% luck equates to roughly 8 to 10, maybe 12 accuracy and evasion for the unit. So even evasion units benefit from that extra accuracy. Luck also adds some crit and crit evasion. So there's just a plethora of good stats here for defensive runes. To sum up, HP and luck sets are king here. Defense and spirit conditionally useful. I would ignore the rest of the other sets. On the offensive side, let's just rule two sets out right away. The AP set, same rules apply here as the TP set on the defensive side. AP problems just aren't, well, a problem. I'm sure people will find some niche uses for the AP set, but in general, all of the other stats are going to be better. The DEX set, 35% DEX. Technically, this is okay on ranged units that scale some attacks on DEX, mostly the Ranger, Sniper, and Gunner subjobs, but it also adds some accuracy, but if you're going for accuracy, you're just going to use that set instead. Outside of some ranged units, the DEX set is pretty underwhelming. In the second tier, we have the accuracy set. The honest truth about accuracy and evasion in War of the Visions, though, is it's really all or nothing. So like the evasion set, if you're building for accuracy, it is a nice boost. Between the accuracy set and something like an aim Alexandrite ring, you'll be able to hit some evasion units. However, if you think putting accuracy stones alone will give you a fighting chance against evasion, they certainly won't. Crit rate is also in the second tier. Most high crit units don't need the extra crit rate from this set bonus, but the crit damage is definitely nice. Basically, if you have a unit that benefits from tons of crit damage or adds extra effects on critical hits, that's where you want these. Units like Yurma or Esther or, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get the point. Not a whole lot of units that you'll want to target with crit stones. The top tier includes both the attack and magic stones. You definitely can't go wrong with a flat attack or magic increase of 10%, and also another 10% defense or spirit penetration, which makes your unit do quite a bit more damage and makes them more effective against tanks and bruisers in particular. These are kind of like the pink starbursts. You just can't go wrong with them. Lastly, the agility set. Speed is good. Speed is life. Speed is the god we all pray to in War of the Visions. Well, you know that and 5 evasion ain't too bad either. Obviously, this is the choice for evasion units, but even for all other units, 3 agility from the set, 3 agility from the stones is 6 total agility. It's a great bonus on pretty much any unit. Just make sure whatever gear that you throw this on already has an agility bonus so you aren't splitting your efforts between two pieces of gear. So to sum up on these stone sets, defensive side, HP and luck are the go-to sets. You could definitely use defense and spirit, maybe evade if you're going for uber evade, say no to TP and crit evade. On the offensive side, attack, magic, agility, these are your go-tos, with accuracy and crit being okay in certain cases, and generally dex and AP being no-nos. Now for the carne asada, the passive bonuses, and there's just so many of these in the game, but there's a lot of them that are super useless. The first rule of thumb though is that when you're crafting for these things, it's always go for the max bonus on each ability. For example, if you roll up 2% HP, that's bad. 4% HP, that's good. So how do you know if you got the max bonus? Well, unfortunately, there's no easy way in game, so you just have to go look on WOTV Calc. If you don't get the max bonus, you'll eventually want to dismantle the stone and try again. Yes, this takes hundreds or even thousands of tries to get what you want. Don't blame me, I'm just the messenger, guys. Remember, guys, that these passives do not stack with each other. So don't go putting like four slash attack bonuses on the same piece of gear and know that they also do not stack with the other gear that the unit will be using. So ideally, the six bonuses you end up with here, you plan them around the other gear that you will be putting on your unit. Okay, so we've gotten ourselves to this point. Defensive runes, what are gonna be the best bonuses? Well, I can tell you what some of the worst are, and that's all of the status effect resistances, just all of them. No, way too specific to be useful. 
We're talking poison resist, charm, petrify, all of that crap, just dump it and try again. This is like everything Oreo except for double stuffs. You're just wasting your time. TP bonus? Nah, nah, just leave this one too. If you haven't gathered by now, TP just isn't all that important. We don't live on a desert island or in the year 2020 anymore. And yes, that is a toilet paper joke. Specific elemental resistance, not all that useful. You can definitely cut into elemental weaknesses with this or target specific teams in PvP, but all things considered, you're probably still going to lose to the opposite element, even with this equipped, and you're building against very specific teams or units or comps. Maybe more useful for certain PvE stuff in the future, but certainly not something that you need now. Personally, I think the element debuff resist is a better bonus, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Evasion, well, this one can be okay. On the surface, it seems like it'd be a really good bonus. The problem is that most evasion units in War of the Visions will already be using another piece of gear that has an evasion bonus on it, and it's going to be higher. So things like the Winter Coat, Black Garb, Sage's Hat, it's really hard to beat these. It's kind of like having a conversation with Allison Bree. You can do it, but you really have to commit to it. Maybe keep one or two evasion stones around if you get them, but they certainly aren't must keep bonuses because you can get evasion easily from other gear. Now we start getting to more usable buffs, stat debuff resistances. We're talking about attack debuff resistance, magic, agility, defense, spirit also included. This number reduces the chance that a debuff procs on you by that percent. So an attack debuff hits your character, you reduce the chance for that debuff to land by 50%. These are actually really good for PvP, particularly defense debuff resistance on physical tanks, spirit debuff resistance on magic tanks, and attack and magic debuff resist on physical and magic attackers. Uh, the agility debuff resist is great for PvP, but that debuff is also less common, uh, Elena you know, notwithstanding. So if I had to rank them, I would say attack and magic debuff resist first because it's a 50 resist, which is huge. And a lot of these debuffs reduce your attack or magic by like 30, 40, or even 50%. So this can be a massive increase uh, for your DPS units. Resisting a timely debuff can result in thousands of extra damage from your DPS units and from your defensive trust stones as well. I personally think it's a good habit to have one of these on every single set. Same with defense and spirit debuff resist. Almost every good DPS unit is going to have these debuffs by now, and this can save you thousands of HP on your tank if you're able to resist like a defense down debuff. There's no reason to have two of these on the same set in my opinion, but maybe some hybrid bruiser units like Bold Leela or Esther, you could argue attack and defense debuff resist would be good for them. Uh, let's quickly talk about attack type debuff resistance and element debuff resistance. Attack type is referring to debuffs such as slash resist down, pierce resist down, magic resist down, etc. Element debuff resistance is things like lightning resist down, fire resist down. Again, this can be really great for tanky units because hey, it turns out most of the DPS units in the game right now stack these debuffs that have resist down on them for their element and attack type who would have thunk it. So this can help your tanks survive a whole lot longer, especially in PvP. Critical evasion. This one is nice and you might be saying, wait, weren't you just trashing on critical evasion for the set bonus? <laughs> And yes, I was, but as a passive bonus, this is really great for any tank or bruiser unit. One, because there isn't much gear, if any, that provides this bonus, and dodging crits gives your tanks more effective HP in PvP. No brainer for tanky units, physical or magic tanking, by the way. Now, attack type resistances, we're talking about slash resist, pierce resist, strike resist, missile resist, magic attack resist. These are also great. Two of these are going to be top tier though, slash and magic resist, must haves in my opinion, so many slash and magic attacks in the game, just put these on every single unit. Some people might argue these bonuses are extraneous because you can get them from other gear, and my rebuttal would be, if you get them from your TMR, you don't have to get them from other gear, which frees you up to use other things like the survival vest for unit attack resistance or brigandine for area attack resistance, for example. So. In my mind, slash and magic resist, these are must-haves. The other resists, they're fine, probably pierce and missile being the next best and strike 
being the lowest priority. Lastly, the other two god tier bonuses are HP plus 10%, and luck plus 10%. Now we've already talked about the benefits of luck, it gives you extra accuracy, evasion, some crit stuff. It's a buff for attackers that you can get on a defensive trust stone. And HP, it's HP, not conditional, not relying on certain attack types or elements. HP is always good, it never judges you. It's like Blake Lively because really, how else are we supposed to explain Ryan Reynolds getting her? To sum up, go for HP, luck, slash resist, Magic resist pretty much on every unit in stone set. These are the golden goslings from there. I like attack and magic debuff resist for attackers. Defense and spirit debuff resist for tanks. Crit evasion, pretty good. Element or attack type debuff resist, also decent choices for the last slot. Whew. Down the home stretch, offensive bonuses. There's a lot more to cover here, a lot harder to tier out because units definitely have a wide array of attack types and elements, but there's a few that we can rule out right away. Max damage, no, 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 no. Sure, there's some stuff you can do with raids and trials with this, but for the 99.9% .9 of players in the game, this is going to be a wasted slot. Basically, unless you're pushing the limits on guild raids or something like that, these are mostly useless. Healing power, also a wasted slot. Too conditional, too easy to debuff these days, and the max bonus of 10% just isn't going to make a huge difference. Way too many other useful attack bonuses to put a slot dedicated to healing power. Skill activation time, this is a no, and before all of you stat nerds come clamoring into the comments, who I appreciate greatly by the way, yes this can be conditionally good on things like Dragoon units or very slow caster units. It's very very unit specific though, very very ability specific though, and not generally a good buff. I'll just leave it at that. Accuracy. This is actually a tough one. Evasion is clearly a problem in the game, but a little bit of accuracy here and there isn't going to cut it. Tends to be all or nothing. We already talked about this before with these set bonuses. It's certainly not a bad bonus by any stretch, but don't expect to be hitting evasion units reliably because you added a 10 accuracy bonus to your TMR. Just not going to happen. You need to stack more accuracy than a single accuracy bonus. That's why this falls down here. Acquired AP up 20%, eh, this is decent, 20% uh, is actually better than the actual set bonus for AP. It's a decent buff for almost any non-magic attacker in the game. Stacking up acquired AP can remove the need for things like the Bells or Old Doa's Apron, but there's definitely better bonuses we can roll up on offensive stones. The Dex bonus can be good for high Dex units, add some crit stuff, a small measure of accuracy, much better on units with high innate dexterity or ranged jobs and sub jobs. Just kind of marginally good overall. Crit rate and crit damage. These are both great bonuses for damage units. Remember now that most tanks will be stacking crit evasion on their stones, so almost all damage units should be stacking crit rate to offset that in PvP. Attack type bonuses. We're talking about slash attack, pierce attack, strike attack, etc. These are actually a little less good than we might think, but only because most weapons already provide these on the weapon and they don't stack. However, War of the Visions is doing a pretty good job at diversifying the bonuses on weapons between attack type bonuses and things like defense penetration and type resist penetration, and that's going to land all of these abilities in the same tier. All of them are going to increase your damage, but they don't usually stack well with your weapon. Ideally, you will give yourself all of these bonuses for the attack type you need between your weapon and your trust stones without any overlap. Realistically, you could just build something with all of, for example, slash attack, defense penetration, and slash penetration, and just use whatever slash weapon you want. A small note here is that having all of these bonuses on your TMR does allow you to not run a weapon in a gear slot, potentially or run a weapon in the TMR slot and use the stones on that weapon, that's probably the true value. But these aren't nearly as good as the more reliable and universal. Attack plus 20%, magic plus 20%. These are must-haves for pretty much all units, attackers or not. Just like you can't have a summer potluck without some terrible potato salad, you can't have good trust stone sets without having these on there. Also top tier for any PvP build, counter chance down 20%. We're talking 20% less chance for reflex, 
damage blocks, damage distribution, Aeon Bond, uh, whatever the crap Astrius's uh, cheese reaction ability is. So this is another winner of the Golden Gosling Award. If you roll up this max bonus, you hold on to it. You hold on to it so tightly that they don't make a terrible Stephen King movie about it and steal it away from you in the night. Finally, elemental attack bonuses, not for the lazy man necessarily because they will be specific to units of certain elements, but if you primarily play, for example, fire and dark or something, you should definitely be keeping any max fire attack or dark attack bonuses you roll up. These are just flat out add damage to all of your abilities, but what really makes them so good is that getting elemental attack from a regular piece of gear is kind of hit or miss depending on the weapon and element type, so element attack bonuses tend to be a little more coveted than say something like slash attack or magic attack which are much easier to find. To recap, attack and magic bonuses, those are must haves. If you're lazy, you could just throw defense or spirit penetration, attack type, type penetration on there too and round it out with element attack, crit rate, crit damage or accuracy. If you're lucky enough to roll up a reactivation rate stone, definitely prioritize that on PvP builds. Whew. And that's it guys. Our work here is done. Never have hand or head pain again. Spend less time on trust stones and more time struggling with windows and eggs that just won't crack. To learn more, please don't dial anything on your telephone. Click the red button below this video and visit youtube.com slash nerdnight for more info. Restrictions don't apply. Trust stones and trust stone related accessories not available. Proof of purchase not required. Not available in Arizona, Hawaii, or Florida.